The new update for Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker is here, the item shop just changed and brought us the new Ten Ten Scrolls, which honestly in a way is absolutely garbage, but there's also a way how you can make it completely OP, and it's also pretty game changing at the same time. Let me explain. The double light in the air and the triple light on the ground lead into a long stun that can be used to combo reset and do infinite combos. The issue with that is though, that the double air light will only connect if you run bonus attack speed on your clothes, otherwise your opponent can just block in between. And for the triple light on the ground to connect, you even need the greatly increased attack speed from the blue chrysanthemum outfit's top skill to be able to connect properly. So the weapon itself doesn't even have any combos at all if you don't run it with the right stats. But once you do, it's actually an absolute beast. The combo enders of this weapon always lead into Demon Wind Shuriken that will send enemies flying and can actually deal a good amount of damage too, because it usually gets thrown at a pretty good angle to get a lot of multi-hits from it. You can also R2 cancel at the end of all the ground combos to shoot a bit faster, but that's only really useful to punish super armored enemies, because the combo counter will be full after two triple lights on the ground anyways, so you can't really shoot it faster than the reset happens if you want to keep the combo going. The heavy attack of this thing is what makes it absolutely broken though. You just can't really block against this thing, and it's really OP in crowded areas or on objectives. It's gonna be extremely hard to hold the base against it without something like Guiding Thunder that can nullify projectiles, but even that can be countered by Strange Taste as well. So yeah, base battles will definitely feel different now. Because this heavy attack actually just throws a bunch of random ninja tools at once at your enemies, and one of those is a giant bomb that will instantly guard break enemies. Yep, instant guard break heavies on range types now. That's where power creep has gotten us to. Then there are also paper bomb kunais that will just go for your block as well. So yeah, you can't just block against this thing. You need to move your ass off that base. Great. It will also shoot normal blast bombs, smoke bombs and paralysis kunais that can stun enemies, demon wind and normal shuriken, and then also very rarely a heal tech once in a while. But it doesn't heal as much as the normal heal tech does, it's really not much and as I said it's also very rare, so you can't just sit there and spam heavy to heal yourself up or anything. But still, instant guard breaks, stuns, heals, knockbacks, paper bombs, and because of the paralysis kunais once in a while, you'll also have some restriction damage, so the heavy attacks can actually deal quite some damage. If you are lucky with the rolls, you might just be able to get a couple of kills in a few seconds by just spamming triangle into a group of players. With the greatly increased attack speed of the blue chrysanthemum outfit's top skill and the karma ultimate on top, that heavy spam is really gonna be an absolute nightmare. On the other hand, it seems to be completely random what you will get out of it, and that kind of makes it pretty unreliable. Then we also got the new Shadow Shuriken Ninja Tool that I absolutely recommend getting. It can be used on all classes, only has a 12 second cooldown, deals really good damage, applies a lot of pressure, and is absolutely insane for combos and team setup. Because, listen, it may only have a little tumble at the end of it, but you have to keep in mind that the time in which the enemy gets hit by all those Shuriken also effectively adds up to the total stun duration of this thing. So you will hold people in place for actually a good amount of time, making it very easy to follow up on it. And then it also kinda hits pretty delayed, because basically how it works is, you first pull out the shuriken that will hover in front of you, then summon the other ones, and then you fire them off. And you can basically already cancel out of the animation right after you initiated the summoning of the other shuriken. So you actually have a lot of time that you can use to do all sorts of things in between launching this tool and the actual hit stun of it ending. You can wind up and hit a full water prison in that time. So you can really do a lot with this. And then in general having that kind of delayed projectile gives you a lot of freedom to combine it with other things and just apply a whole lot of pressure which will affect enemy movements and increase the chance of them making mistakes. It's really a good way to make your opponent block and then punishing him with an unblockable move like Amaterasu, Tsukuyomi or Water Prison for example or to get an instant guard break in with something like Dynamic Entry for example so they will lose their sub as well. You could even just use it in a combo after a stun that is not really long enough to combo into it just to bait your opponent into blocking and then just guard break them to get their sub and combo extend. It's really good to cover up basic charge attacks too 
The initial shuriken you pull out can already hit opponents as well, so you can also use it to counter out an incoming charge attack since you jump back and pull out the shuriken in front of you. And it's also that little backwards movement that will ensure that you don't hit an enemy out of your own combo on the ground. But you won't do that jump backwards when you cast it in the air, so just keep that in mind if you are using it with something like a thunderclap arrow stun. If you are in front of your enemy and do it in the air, you will knock them out of the stun. But yeah, Thunderclap Arrow in particular is something that works extremely well with this tool. You can really come up with some nice one-shots. Like this Chidori Shuriken combo I came up with for example. Just hit the Thunderclap stun, launch the tool, pop the second activation of Thunderclap Arrow and that combination Jutsu alone is already enough to one-shot a range type. And then you can always do a little combo before or follow up on it if it's a higher health target. And if you decide to not pop the thunderclap, the puddle on the ground with the buff this jutsu recently received also will lead into another dropdown after the tumble, so you can use that to extend the stun at the end of it as well. It also has a lot of synergy with sage mode, because you can just activate it beforehand and then pop the sage mode to skyrocket its damage. It works well with any other projectiles or things that you can follow up with on that little tumble at the end, an absolutely great ninja tool. I'm so in love with this thing and it also just looks pretty cool. I always wanted them to add this jutsu and I'm so glad they finally did it. Before we continue with the other items in the shop, I just want to let you know that I'm also gonna drop a little combo compilation with this thing very soon, just to show different ways how you can utilize it in combos, because I already know that next to nobody online will do any proper combos with it and just throw it out as it is. And I would at least want them to know how to follow up on it or how to combo into it properly as well. The only real downside to this ninja tool is the high combo counter value. But just use it towards the end of a combo or follow up on it with something that can reset combo counter and that's not really an issue. The Inferno Sword Heavy Attack is a perfect example for something that you can use to work your way around that. The tool has a pretty long wind up, yeah, but as I said it's also one of its biggest strengths as well because that delayed hit is what gives you all those options in the first place. They also brought back the Glimmering Flames, one of my favorite ninja tools of all time. It stuns enemies and lowers their defense and movement speed, so it's great for all sorts of one-shot setups. It has two charges and a low cooldown and therefore is one of the best combo extenders in the game. It goes through walls, so it's really easy to just hit it through the ground to stun somebody on a base and just one-shot them. I promise you this works 9 out of 10, nobody ever sees those coming. And then I also just like the Shadow Shuriken, are a slow traveling projectile, so it kinda has similar strengths in that regard. It also nullifies most other ninja tools and range heavy attacks, so you can really just move with it and have it between you and your enemy and be pretty safe from incoming charge attacks and projectiles. A lot of people will struggle to play against that. It's kind of the equivalent to a jujitsu guy jumping on his back facing his feet towards you. You can't really get in there without risking to get your face kicked. It really acts as kind of a defensive barrier between you and your enemy. A great tactical tool. One of my signature moves basically is to combo into a Glimmering Flames, backdash and use another Glimmering Flames from a distance and then I can do whatever while the enemy is stunned and the next stun is already coming at them refreshing the stun, giving you a really high token stun duration and a lot of freedom to act in between sending the second Glimmering Flames and the stun of it running out. You could literally just let them cook for a couple of seconds and go fight somebody else, taking them out of the fight for a while and effectively generating man advantage for a couple of seconds and then afterwards pick the combo back up and finish them off. Or use that to set up all sorts of secret technique combos. And it's also a great finisher. If somebody is pretty low already and you pull that double glimmering flames combo on them and let them burn to death, you can just delay their death that way and just stagger them to carry more momentum because you can already be productive again while the enemy is still in the process of dying on their own. So you take them out of the fight for the stun duration of two glimmering flames, then they have the respawn timer and have to get back into the fight first before they can be useful to their team again. Considering it as a 4v3 for you during that time, you should easily be able to get another kill before he is back and then just keep man advantage going, keep carrying momentum and just snowball the entire match from there. That's how big of a difference these small little details can actually make. You just need to understand, in order to get a proper stun off with this tool, you need to hit it on the ground. If the enemy is airborne, it will just briefly stagger them, but not really stun them. 
But I wouldn't show you corny pro strats like that without also providing a solution. So how do you combat this? Well, the main goal is to stop the momentum of the enemy team. You want to get back to a point where you and your teammates regroup and can re-engage in a 4v4 with full resources again as quickly as possible. So one thing that you can use as kind of an equalizer and to get back momentum is your secret technique. Something like a Feather Illusion C4 combo or a Kamui Shuriken in Infinite Tsukiyomi. Just a powerful ultimate that will turn the tides of the battle. That's one thing. Another one is to retreat early enough into your spawn so it gets easier to regroup with your teammates again and might also trick your enemies into overextending, following you deeply into your half of the map. And then they also brought back the Itachi outfit with no special stats. Peace out and never forget, if it has a health bar, it has to die.